So up to now we've been setting up our problem so we can go ahead and do the regression analysis properly. So here we're gonna go ahead and run the regression in mini tab. We'll do Excel here in a minute. So we have price versus square footage, whether or not it's exemplary, and the region. And then this is our first bit of information from mini tab about our regression. So let's go ahead and take this step by step. The first thing we wanna look at is the regression row in our analysis of variance table. We can see that we have an F value of 38.03 and a P value of 0 0.000, which means that it is less than 0 0.001. So the regression is significant. Now let's look at each part of that regression. So square footage has an F value of 110.39. That's a huge F value. It has a P value of 0 0.000 as well. So that means it's less than 0 0.001 and is significant. Now exemplary high school, whether it is or isn't, yes or no, that has an F value of 7.57 and a P value of 0 0.007. Again, that is significant at 0 0.05. Then we have the region variable. So there we have an F value of 2.00 and only a P value of 0.119. So at 0 0.05, the region is not significant. Now for a model summary, we have a standard error of the regression, that's the S, of 44.11. Now remember, that is in thousands of dollars. So the standard error of our regression, sort of the space around the regression model, how well it fits, the data fit around the regression, is $44,000 approximately. Now we could use that to compare it to other models. For this example, we won't say much more about it. Now the R squared is 66.92%, that's pretty good. Our adjusted R squared is 65.16. So remember, that takes into account the number of variables we have in our model. And then our R squared predicted is 62.32%. Just a few reminders about the R squared predicted. Number one, we look to see whether or not it is significantly lower than the R squared and R squared adjusted. If it is significantly lower, we have a problem with our model. But here, it's 6692, 6516, that's pretty good. Now remember, it tells us how well our model does at predicting the home price. So 62.32% is pretty good. Now a note about Minitab. So Minitab 16 and 17 do not require you to create dummy variables, which is very handy you can enter categorical variables directly as they are into the regression. So here's a screenshot of what I did. In the response variable place, which is our dependent variable, I put the price. In the continuous predictors box, I put our only continuous predictor, which is square footage. And then in the categorical predictors, I could just go ahead and put in exemplary and region directly as they are. I did not have to create any dummy variables for those categorical predictors and it went ahead and did the regression, it's smart enough to know to go ahead and create the dummy variable sort of in the background and just go ahead and give us the result. That's very handy. Now, I'm sure there are other statistical packages that do the same thing, but right now I'm a fan of Minitab, I like using it. So I just wanted to show you how I did it in Minitab. So here's the second part of our analysis for Minitab, we have the coefficients. So the constant term in this case, we won't pay a whole lot of attention to. Um, I did have a viewer asked me about the coefficient or the intercept, whether it matters or not, and really it depends on the model or the question you're asking. In some regressions, it can be meaningful, in others, it's not so meaningful. So in this example, if we were just looking at square footage and home price, it might make sense to look at the constant or to force the intercept to be at zero, zero, because a home that's zero square feet probably costs zero dollars, unless you're looking at the land it's sitting on. So for this problem, we'll just acknowledge the constant, we won't worry more about it, and we'll go ahead and proceed. So for square feet, we have a coefficient of 0 0.09202, a p-value 0 0.000, and a VIF, which is a variance inflation factor of 1.23. That's a good thing. That means we don't have any problem with multicollinearity. Let's go ahead and talk about the coefficient for square feet. What does it mean? So what it means is that for every increase in one square foot in home size, the price of the home increases by $0.09202 thousand dollars. So if we move that decimal over three places, so over to between the two and the zero, 
What we're saying is that for every square foot increase in home size, we expect a price increase of $92. So if home A was 2,000 square feet and home B was 2,001 square feet, we would expect home B to be $92 more expensive. If it were 1,000 square feet larger, we would expect home B to be $92,000 more expensive. So that is how we would interpret the square footage coefficient. So now let's examine the coefficient for exemplary. It is 27.31, has a p-value 0 0.007, so that is significant, and a VIF of 1.26, so we're all good there. Now what does the 27.31 actually mean? Well, again, we'll look at the house A and house B example. If house A has a high school that is not exemplary, so that would be a zero for that variable, then we have house B, where the high school is exemplary, so that would be a one for that variable, we would expect home B to be $27,310 more expensive on average. That's what that coefficient can be interpreted as. Now let's look at region. As you can see, many tabs sorted out the regions for us. It basically made dummy variables for us in the background, and it left the east one off because it's the first one alphabetically. That's why I did that a few slides ago. So here we have north, which is negative four, with a p-value of 0.751, that is definitely not significant. For south, we have 7.2 as the coefficient, a p-value of 0.579, that is not significant. Then we have west, which is negative 23.1, and a p-value of 0.077. At 0.05, that is not significant. So remember that a variable is either significant or it's not. There is no gray area. And at 0 0.077, it is not significant. So now let's see how we would do this same problem in Excel. So the first thing I would do is go ahead and put in my coded variables. So price, square footage, exemplary high school, south, west, north. We already did this a few slides ago. So this is exactly how it would look in Microsoft Excel. Then I would go ahead and use the data analysis tool pack or the new analysis tool pack that was just put out by Frontline Systems which I will link to in the description of the video. It is an app version with logistic regression added that runs as an app in Excel 2013 and Excel Online. So again, I'll put that link down below. And of course, since it runs in Excel Online, you can use it on a Mac. Now, if we did this analysis using the data analysis add-in that's on the PC version of Excel or the Frontline Systems Analysis Tool Pack, we will get this result. So we have the R squared, adjusted R squared, standard error of the regression, et cetera, the same output we got from Minitab. Then we have the same ANOVA table. Now notice that Excel does not go into near as much detail about the specifics of the ANOVA table as Minitab does. That's just the reality of Excel. And for the coefficients at the bottom, we have the intercept, the square footage, the exemplary high school, in the south, west, and north. Let's go ahead and compare the results of Minitab to the results from Excel. Now in this slide, I wanna compare using the actual dummy variables in Minitab and the dummy variables in Excel. A couple of slides ago, we saw some Minitab output where I just put the location in as a categorical variable, Minitab knew what to do and gave me my results. Now what I did in this slide is I ran the exact same spreadsheet basically in Excel and Minitab using the proper dummy variables. So the zeros and ones for the three regions. Let's go ahead and look at the results. So on the left, we have the Minitab output using the actual dummy variables. So we had x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, versus just throwing in the, the variable as is, as I did before. We have an F value of 38.03. Look over on the right in Excel. We have an F value of 38.03. We have a residual sum of squares on the left here in Minitab, 182,904. Look over here in Excel, 182,904. Same thing for the total sum of squares. So my point here is that no matter which way you do it, I can do it in Minitab, just throwing in the categorical variables intact as they are, or I could recode them into zeros and ones, do the same thing in Minitab and get the same result, as I would get the same result in Excel using all of the region dummy variables. It does not matter. 
you will get the same basic results with just some small, very, very small rounding differences. Either way you do it, doesn't matter. So here's the model summary using all the dummy variables in Minitab over here on the left and Excel over here on the right. So no matter which way you do it, you're going to get the same result either way. So now let's go ahead and actually look at our regression equations. And remember, how many do we have to look at? Eight. Remember, we have two options for exemplary, yes or no, and then four options for region. So two times four is eight. So this first option, we have no for exemplary high school. The home is in the east region. And the price equals negative 30.3 plus 0 0.09202 square feet. So now we have the other seven equations. And here they are. Now I am not going to go through and read all of them. You can pause the video and look at them all if you'd like. Now I do want to point out a couple of things. You can see that we have all combinations of no in each region at the top. Then we have all combinations of yes in each region down here at the bottom. Now these two in the green, I just want to point out just for a second because we're going to see those here in a minute in a different way. So we can see that the west, if you look at the no variables up here at the top half, we can see that the intercepts up there are negative 30, negative 34, negative 23, but then we get to the west and it's negative 53. And the same thing down at the bottom for the yes set of equations. So the intercept down there is negative three, negative seven, 4.1, and then we get to the west, that's negative 26.1. So the west, remember from our regression analysis, that p-value was 0 0.077, I think. So it was not statistically significant, but you can see why it was so much lower in p-value than the other ones, because it is much further away from the other three in each set. And we'll see that visually right now. Okay, so here is a graph of all of the no equations. So these are all the linear equations where the high school is not exemplary for all four regions. So I know it's hard to see because the lines are pretty close together, but I wanna point out the green one. That is our west line. So you can see that the west line is offset pretty far from the other three. And again, we saw that in the regression output that had a p-value of 0 0.077. Even though not statistically significant, the prices of those homes in the West were lower than the other three regions. And if we graph those equations on a graph, you can actually see it. So here are the yes equations. So you can see again that the West is much lower than the other three. Even though it's not statistically significant, it is lower than the other three. Now, all that being said about the West region, I want to point out the most important thing about these two graphs. I want to draw your attention to the intercepts down here at the origin. So over here on the no equations, look at where the lines cross. Okay, look at where the lines cross the axis. A little bit down into the negative of the Y, a little bit over towards the positive in the X's. Now look at where it crosses over here on the right. So as a set, all four equations are moved up. So you can see the difference of where they intersect over here on the left versus where they intersect over here on the right. All four equations are moved upward. Now how does this visual relate to the output we got from Minitab and Excel? Well, here's a piece of that output. Notice the exemplary down here at the bottom. It has a p-value 0 0.007 that is statistically significant. And what that means is that as a group, the homes that have exemplary high schools as a set are moved up from the ones that do not over here on the left. So you can see it graphically by graphing the equations. You can see it by looking at the output from the statistical software packages, both. And this is the power of doing statistics. You can see it visually in the graphs, you can see it in the output, and it's very easy to explain for anyone else who'd like to see it. Now it also shows us why the regions were not statistically significant. Look at how close together the region lines are for each graph. The one difference being that west line. So remember the west had that p-value of 0 0.077. So it's further away from the other ones, but not enough to be statistically significant. But yet we can still see it on the graph. So these two graphs explain our entire model here. So we know that the home price goes up as the square footage goes up. That's fairly obvious. 
But we can look at the regions and notice the lines are very close together, with the small exception of the west region. But as a group, the homes with an exemplary high school are higher than they are over here on the left, where the high school was not exemplary. So let's close by talking about our interpretation and our conclusion. So it appears from this data and its analysis that higher square footage is a significant predictor of higher home price. The p-value was 0 0.000, so higher square footage, so square footage was definitely a predictor of higher price, and that makes sense. Being in a district with an exemplary high school is also a significant predictor of higher home price. And we saw that both in the output and we saw that in the graphs we did. So we could see very clearly that the set of equations that had high schools that were exemplary were higher than the ones that did not have a high school that was exemplary. Now region is not a significant predictor of higher home price. So again, we saw that in the output and we saw it in the graphs because the region lines were very close together with that small exception of the West, but even it was not far enough away from the others to be statistically significant. Now we should have extreme caution with causation. Causation is always problematic in statistics, unless we're setting up some sort of controlled experiment, which in this case we did not. So here are the questions. Do larger homes tend to be built in districts with already existing exemplary high schools? Or do high schools in areas with larger homes attract wealthier families who bring certain economic and social privileges that make the high schools exemplary? This is the famous chicken and the egg problem, the causation problem. Do the larger homes tend to be built where the schools are already good, or does having large homes bring in families with certain privileges that then create really good high schools because they have those privileges? And that's something we have to think about more at a theoretical level that the statistics alone cannot answer for us. Okay, so that wraps up part five of our series about multiple regression, where we learned how to set up, analyze, and then interpret the results of a regression problem where we had two dummy variables. If you like the video, please subscribe up here in the top left if you have not done so already. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it can help someone else that you know, please share it with them. That's the main reason I do these. Now down in the lower right, you will see links to other parts of my channel that make navigating my videos easier. And finally, thank you for watching. I wish you the best of luck in all your studies and in your work, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.